Come along on this episode of Loving the View with Russ and Nettie as we shake things up a bit by exploring the Mammoth Earthquake Fault, an amazing geological wonder near Mammoth Lakes. Heading up Highway 203, just about a mile and a half past the village of Mammoth Lakes, you come to the entrance to the Mammoth Earthquake Fault. There's an easy to see sign on the right side of the road marking the entrance to this park. And once there, there's a parking lot with enough space for probably about 15 to 20 cars. And near the parking area are bathroom facilities with vault toilets and picnic tables for a nice meal break. With just a short walk from the parking lot, you'll catch your first glimpses of the fault as well as one of the land bridges to get you to the other side. This feature, while called Earthquake Fault, is actually considered a fracture or a fissure as there is very little lateral or up and down movement but it's still amazing to look at when you realize the power that went into making this geological feature. Well, it's not known for sure the time frame. It's believed that this fracture was caused about 550 to 650 years ago during a period of intense geologic activity. And during that same period, that's when the Inyo craters were believed to have been formed during two large steam explosions or a couple of large steam explosions. And also a couple of volcanic eruptions at the Obsidian Glassman Creek and Dead Man Domes, which are only a couple of miles from here, north of here. This is a real amazing find here, and it's a testament to the geologic activity of the area. After checking out some of the fault, we found another land bridge that allowed us to gain access to the bottom of this part of the fissure. It was kind of surreal thinking about how the earth ripped apart so many years ago, and here we are just hiking down into the bottom of it. And on top of that, we even saw snow while we were down there in the middle of July. I did do some research and found that the native peoples who lived in this area actually stored food in the cool area at the bottom during the warm summer months to help prevent spoilage. And the early pioneers would also get some of the snow to make ice cream during those same hot months. We spent a bit of time checking it out down here, but it was time to head back up and do some more exploring of this area. And seeing how small we were from up above gives a bit of perspective on just how deep it gets in areas. Are you out of breath? A little bit. It's not bad though. Good thing we're in the peak of physical conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that are wondering if this earthquake fault is all that it's cracked up to be, take a look down there. You don't see that just anywhere. We're standing here at one of the furthest land bridges that is actually made that has steps and a railing. You can actually see the parking lot from here. It's in the distance. You might not be able to see it on this video, but you can see the cars from here. So it's not far at all. So the walk around this fault is not bad in the least. And across the way over there is a little fort somebody made out of a whole bunch of fallen sticks and wood. This is a dog friendly park, but you're supposed to keep them on a leash, which isn't a bad idea anyway, as you don't want Fido getting too close to the edge and possibly falling into the fissure. If you do come out here with your dog, make sure you bring water because it can get pretty warm. And we found this nice rock here with a depression in it. We can pour some water in it for Lily. The main deep fissure area is really cool, but there is an area of the fissure which is actually pretty shallow and only a short, easy walk from the more rugged areas. Right along here, the fracture or fault line is a lot shallower. I'm pretty sure this is where it started. And as it works its way towards Minaret Drive, it gets a lot deeper. It gets up to 60 feet deep in some areas and a lot rockier than this too. Still pretty cool knowing what this is though. After exploring the main fissure area, we headed across the road to check out an extension of the fracture. It was really cool as we were able to check out the bottom of this one as well. Lily was clearly pleased to see us crawl through. <laughs> doesn't feel great on the knees either. No, it doesn't. This is, this is pretty cool. This is part of the fissure on the other side of Minaret Road. It's cool being able to think you can actually come down inside of a fault line like this for a fissure or a fracture. Go get Daddy. <laughs> Looking at this feature from above gives you a great view of how this whole area could almost go back together like a giant zipper. 
I can only imagine how loud it must have been to hear the earth split apart like it did so many years ago. As you come down from the parking lot to this area, this is where interpretive signs used to be, or an interpretive sign. And we talked to a forest service representative and they said this sign was actually damaged during a large winter storm and a tree fell on it. He said this whole area is kind of in a deferred state of maintenance. I think probably budgetary constraints. But he's, he was hoping that this would be a spot that would be great for funds from the Great American Outdoors Act. And that fund puts aside money to help repair and re redo some locations like this. And I think this would be a great spot for it. It's a beautiful area and I think people would really enjoy it. Hey, Nettie. Hey, what? Do you know where the safest place is during an earthquake? <laughs> Nowhere. A stationary store. <laughs> That's so lame. Yeah, I don't know, it's pretty good. This Mammoth Earthquake Fault is a super easy stop right off Minaret Road. You can explore as much or as little of it as you want. Even this spot's on the opposite side of the road. Walking down inside the fault, it's nice and cool. It's about 85 degrees out. And down in the fault, I think it was probably about 50. So it was definitely worth it. We recommend coming here.